I've been a CNA for the past two and a half years at my local nursing home and assisted living. Raise your hand if you know what CNA stands for. Okay, about half of you. Those who don't, it stands for Certified Nursing Assistant or Certified Nursing Aid. Being a CNA can benefit you when you apply for scholarships or resumes. It is great work experience and it'll be an easier transition when you enter the healthcare field and or program. My first main point is that it looks great on resumes and scholarships. If you have on a resume that you have been a CNA, especially in your late teens or early 20s, it shows that you are dedicated, willing to work, and you are hardworking. Also, if you are able to write that um, personal experiences in your scholarship essay, it looks great and it'll give you uh, like a higher up on getting the scholarship. For example, I was awarded the Schultz for Dog Nursing Scholarship here at Presentation College, and in my scholarship essay, I was able to tell personal stories and um, past experiences being a CNA, and I think that is one of the main reasons why I was awarded the scholarship, because I was able to be personal. My second main point is that it's great work experience. Not a day will go by that is the same. Also, you will know the basic skills such as taking vitals, which include blood pressure, pain tolerance, respiration, pulse. And also you will know how to ambulate with a gate belt, which is a stretcher just walking somebody with a belt around them, and changing an occupied bed. Also, you gain great communication skills because you are talking to the nurses, other CNAs, the residents, and sometimes the residents' family. So you, know, so you have to know how to communicate with anybody and everybody. Also, there are tons of different cultures you will learn in the nursing home. Some people just think, oh, it's just old people in a nursing home, but that is not true. Culture is everywhere. For example, we have one lady, she's from the African Congo. I have no clue how she got to North Dakota. It's a small town, but she did. And I learned the hallway. Um, you have to call her Madame, or she'll get, she'll throw things at you. <laughs> she will scream at you. So everybody knows to call her Madame. And that is just one example of the different cultures. My third main point is that it helps your transition. You will gain a basic understanding of the requirements of a nurse because you work with them and alongside them. Their hours, you understand that nurses work hard, long hours because CNAs sometimes get stuck with those long 12 hour shifts. And most people know that nurses do not have easy days. They also have most of the time 12 hour shifts. Especially the new nurses, they'll get like the graveyard shift or the shift that nobody else wants to work. Also their duties, you will you see them in their prime working. So you, for example, I see um, them passing pills or I got to a fist and taking out stitches on a resident, which I thought was pretty cool. And you will know if you're emotionally stable for the job. Uh, people do pass away in nursing homes and yes, it is sad, but that cannot affect how you continue to work throughout the day. Um, on your breaks, you can let it all out and cry, but you cannot take it out on other residents or you cannot um, be poor for the rest of the day and you have to go about the rest of your day like nothing happened. So I challenge you to look at the requirements to be a CNA in the state of South Dakota or whatever state interests you. You can find the requirements at nursingmessenger.org. In conclusion, I told you my three main points of why you should become a CNA. It looks good on scholarships and resumes is great work experience, and it is an easier transition when you enter the healthcare field and program.